the A-12 was produced from 1962 to 1964 and flew from 1963 to 1968. It was the precursor to the twin-seat U.S. Air Force YF-12 prototype interceptor, M-21 launcher for the D-21 drone, and the SR-71 Blackbird, a slightly longer variant able to carry a heavier fuel and camera load. The A-12 began flying missions in 1967. Its final mission was in May of 1968. The program and aircraft were retired in June. The program officially revealed to the public in the mid-1990s. It was a high-altitude Mach 3 reconnaissance aircraft built for the United States Central Intelligence Agency by Lockheed Skunk Works, based on the designs of Clarence Kelly Johnson and was developed and operated under Project Oxcart. Clarence was an American aeronautical and systems engineer. He's recognized for his contributions to a series of important aircraft designs, most notably Lockheed's U-2 and SR-71 Blackbird. Besides the first production aircraft to exceed Mach 3, he also produced the first fighter capable of Mach 2 and the United States' first operational jet fighter, as well as the first fighter to exceed 400 miles per hour and many other contributions to various aircraft. Project Oxcard was selected from a random list of code names to designate this R&D and all later work on the A-12. The aircraft itself came to be called that as well. The Lockheed A-12 was well ahead of its time. Many new technologies had to be invented specifically for the Oxcar project, with some remaining in use all the way till today. One of the biggest problems that engineers faced at that time was working with titanium. Before the A-12, titanium was used only in high-temperature exhaust fairings and other small parts directly related to supporting, cooling, or shaping high-temperature areas on aircraft, like those subject to the greatest kinetic energy heating from the airstream, such as wing leading edges. The A-12, however, was constructed mainly of titanium. Titanium is quite rigid and very difficult to machine, which made it difficult to form into curves given available techniques. This made it difficult to form the leading edges of the wing and similar surfaces. In June 1964, the last A-12 was delivered to Groom Lake, from where the fleet made a total of 2,850 test flights. A total of 18 aircraft were built throughout the program's production run. Of these, 13 were A-12s. Three were prototype YF-12A interceptors for the U.S. Air Force, not funded under the Oxcar program. And two were M-21 reconnaissance drone carriers. Although originally designed to succeed the U-2 overflying the Soviet Union and Cuba, the A-12 was never used for either objective. After a U-2 was shot down in May of 1960, the Soviet Union was considered too dangerous to overfly except for in emergency and overflights were no longer necessary thanks to reconnaissance satellites, although crews did train for flights over Cuba. U-2s continued to be adequate there. The A-12 was a one-seater that could hold a payload of 2,500 pounds. It was 101 feet long with a wingspan of 55 feet, that's 31 by 17 meters. Able to hold 10,590 U.S. gallons of fuel, the dual Pratt & Whitney JT-11D 20B turbine engines could easily lift this 117,000-pound or 53,000-kilogram aircraft, and it could propel it to over three times the speed of sound. The A-12 was a true feat of aviation technology. Flying at 90,000 feet, which was 20,000 feet higher than its older brother, the U-2, and its speeds reaching Mach 3.29, the A-12 was destined to be the fastest plane of the era. The A-12 program was ended on 28 December 1966, and the plane was replaced with a two-seater SR-71, which looked identical and had similar dimensions, but some very vast differences. The A-12 had major advantages and capabilities to the SR-71 to include its high-resolution photography and its ability to go marginally faster topping out at Mach 3.3 compared to the SR-71. However, the SR-71 was chosen as the successor to the A-12 due to its side-looking radar and cameras, allowing it to gather more important reconnaissance data without penetrating enemy airspace. In February of 1968, Lockheed was ordered to destroy all tooling used to create the Blackbirds. Also during this year, the first SR-71 arrived at Kadena to replace the A-12s, and it also flew its first operational mission on March 21st. 
May 8th, that year saw the last operational mission of an A-12, which was over North Korea. Upon completion, all A-12s were sent back to Palmdale, California, and they were put in storage for several decades. Many A-12s were sent to museums around the United States, and they can still be seen on display today. These are Interesting Things with J.C.